Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabriel, just another fan TV, man. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all the videos. Let's get into some of this Ravens news over the weekend. Uh, but first, just want to say to um, RIP Chuck, man, you know, um, prime, you know, famous guy in the Ravens community, you know, have, I think, like, 11,000 followers on Twitter, you know, funny guy, things like that. Passed away over the weekend, you know. Um, I think you might, you might have seen in Grave, you might have seen Nitro already talk about it, but um, check up on your people, man. You know, uh, you never know what somebody's going through. A simple, how you doing? You know, I got to do better with it myself. You know, I'm not good at checking up on people. So, you know, stuff like this kind of open your eyes up like, dang, you know, reach out to people, see what's going on. You know what I mean? We all got stuff. We all got demons. We all got stuff that we fighting. Um, and fighting it alone internally is hard. Tough business. So it's a lot of things that we can do nowadays. A lot of therapy apps and that are cheaper than, you know, traditional therapy. So, um, but yeah, man, you know, if you reach, reach that point, reach out to somebody, um, yeah, man, you know, and uh, we, we all got a valuable life. So we just gonna, I'm just leave it at that, man. You know, I'll be Chuck, you know, pay for his family, his kids, things like that. Um, So as far as Ravens news from the weekend, right? So let's let's roll into it, okay? Uh, the, something that was a story last week that I didn't think should have been a story at all was the fact that Lamar Jackson wasn't at the football school, which is just voluntary OTAs, honestly. Um, but according to Sarah Ellison, she says she has a source that says Lamar Jackson will be there this week. Um, this is, I believe, the first time mandatory OTA is one of the first days, and he'll be there, right? So all of this uh, reaction last week, obviously, was for nothing. Um, it was kind of a, a something that was very, very minuscule that was made into a big deal. We knew that when, it time, to, when time came to actually play uh, football when it comes to um, mandatory and things like that, Lamar just is going to show up, all right? He's never really skipped anything that was mandatory. Even when he was going through everything with the contract, he was still here. You know what I'm saying? So he never held out. He never um, was selfish about any way that he was moving. So why would he do it now after he's gotten paid, right? It doesn't make any sense for him to do that. So um, me personally, I already made the video about it. It wasn't a big deal when it happened that he wasn't there. I didn't expect him to be there. You know, um, it's just funny how he got singled out. I didn't see Ronnie Stanley there. Uh, people are telling me that Mark Andrews wasn't there, so thank you guys for confirming that when when I dropped the video. Uh, Bateman wasn't there. Odell wasn't there. They working. They was working up together. I think in L.A. So it wasn't a big deal, right? He wasn't the only Raven there. Uh, maybe it was a bigger deal because you saw Marlon Humphrey there. You saw Roquan Smith there, two leaders on the defense. You say, well, where are the guys on the offense? If that's your issue, then okay, maybe I see it a little bit, but not really, honestly. Um, what's happening right now, as far as um disposition drills and things like that wasn't going to help wasn't going to solve anything that's going to happen in september right um the ravens got plenty of time to build that team chemistry with each other build that familiarity with each other lamar jackson missing a week of voluntary otas is not what's going to make or break this season right um people try to compare it to all oh, other quarterbacks are there I, hey listen great for them they're, they're there that's that's fine for them they want to be there i have no issue with it like i have no issue with they didn't say oh patrick Mahomes, joe barrel they're there Great for them. That's that's not what Lamar Jackson wants to do. He's been working out. I saw a video of him working out with Aguilar. I'm sure he's going to work out with Zay Flowers. They both in South Florida. Um, he's, he gets the guys together every offseason. So there is no worry about Lamar Jackson's not going to put in the work. He always puts in the work. So I just thought that story was overblown. Anyway. All right. So next thing from the weekend was uh, I saw an article written by, I think it was Ryan Mink. And he was talking about some offensive changes with Ty Munkin. And um, one thing that really particularly stood out to me, obviously he goes into, well, it's going to be different, you know, more spread out, things like that. Different formations are great. Okay, cool. But he says that the Ravens will play at a faster pace. Just looking at how they were doing things, that voluntary OTAs, things were kind of quicker, kind of sped up. And we know that one of the issues that the Ravens had, especially under Greg Roman, particularly under Greg Roman, was delay game penalties, illegal formation penalties, not being lined up correctly. The, um, the play clock. Lamar has to get to the line of scrimmage or, or gets back, you know, into the shotgun and it's four seconds on the play clock. Now he can't even read the defense pre-snap. He just got to hike the ball, right? So with that being said, if the Ravens can play at a faster pace or just mix up their tempos enough to keep a defense off guard, that's great news, right? Um, and that's something I saw somebody talk about. Well, uh, it was a lot of delayed game penalties. It was in the comments on, in the last video that the Ravens had a lot of delayed game penalties. You know, Lamar has to be there to help build the time and the rhythm and stuff like that. Um, I truly believe, and I said in the comment that the delayed game penalties were acceptable to Greg Roman's offense. If you look up anything that he's done 
Buffalo, San Francisco, all the same issues that we've had at Ravens fans, Buffalo and San Francisco fans have said the same thing about Greg Roman, right? It's good for a year or two, kind of gets figured out, kind of gets stale, and then um, it should start popping up, you know, late play clause, delayed games, things like that, right? All right, anyway, so n enough about Greg Roman. So with Todd Munkin, if he can have the Ravens play at a faster pace, the Ravens have a fast offense, right? Zay Flowers, Lamar Jackson himself, J.K. Dobbins, you know, Odell is pretty shifty. Um, Rashad Bateman, we saw that he could get in and go. So if they can play at a faster pace, tire out some defenses, and then mix it up and slow it down and, and, and punish with the ground game, that could be a very, very effective tool for the Ravens, right? Because I don't think that just because they're moving at a faster pace down that they're always going to play at 100 miles an hour fast pace, right? We've seen that, that that doesn't necessarily always work, right? So with Chip Kelly in Philadelphia many years ago, and he was calling plays within 10 seconds. They was going three and out in 30 seconds. You know what I mean? So it doesn't always necessarily mean you got to go 100 miles an hour every single snap. But if you can switch your pace and your tempo, that's great. The Ravens in the last couple of years never had a, 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 a pickup switch, right? Unless, you know, it's two minute, two minute drill. That doesn't really count because everybody does that. But if we're talking about normal parts, normal flow of the game, the Ravens never had a switch where it was like, okay, let's pick up the pace, let's pick up the tempo. It was always slow, 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 drawn out, right? And when you got Lamar Jackson, right, one of the quickest players in the league, one of the fastest players in the league, um, play at a faster tempo. Use that speed and that uh, and endurance to your advantage, right? The Ravens never really did that. So, um, like I said, this voluntary OTA is just football school. You know, not going not gonna to read too much into it. But if the Ravens can learn or can adapt to playing at a faster pace, mixing up their tempos, it would be a very, very effective tool for them going into next year. All right. So last thing I want to talk about is um, Odafi Owe, right? So Odafi Owe is another player that's there. No surprise. He's only, you know, year three player, whatever. Um, and he was talking about how he wants to break out in year three, right? Could we see a Patrick Queen-like breakout from Odafi Owe, right? Uh, Patrick Queen, we know, had a, a good rookie year. Kind of went down the second year. He broke out last year. Look at Odafi Owe. Had a good rookie year. Had a slump last year. Maybe he breaks out this year, right? Maybe the same formula applies. We'll see. We don't know, but we'll, we shall see, right? So he was talking about how he's looking to have a bounce back year. He's, he's using last season as a fuel to get as fuel to the fire to get better, which is great. Um, but a couple of things that really stood out to me to when he, when he was talking was that he said he pretty much had no offseason. He was straight to the gym, working on his moves, getting better, lifting, whatever. So um, listen, I will always advocate for players. Take some time off. Get your mind right. Um and then attack it. But, you know, he said he wants to get right back into the gym. So he didn't have much of an offseason. He said there's no real offseason. So I, I respect that, right? Um, he's always been a guy that's been in good shape. I don't think he needs to get any bigger, honestly. Uh, I think being, you know, what he is now so he can still be lean. and Because and, his biggest thing is that he's, he's strong and he's fast. So you don't want to lose that speed element to it, right? So you want to be able to keep that. So you don't, don't want to gain too much weight as far as bulking up, right? So I think he's at a good weight right now. So uh, a couple of things that Adafi always said that he was focusing on um, this offseason to get better than he was last year, right? He said he's focusing on his balance, his concentration, and finishing, right? He said there was a lot of plays out there where he was close, he was almost there. And this is true. Adafi always has a lot of almost sacks, right? Um whether it's, you know, he gets the hand on the guy or he can't fully bring him down, whatever the case may be, he is close, right? But close doesn't cut it, right? You know, you don't get a half a sack for close. You don't get a full sack for close. You got to do something to bring the guy to the to the ground. Um, So he's working on that. He said he's working on balance when, you know, when engaging with blockers and just concentration lasts throughout the entire play. So this is good that he is, he studied his game tape, right? He saw what he needed to improve on, and he's been attacking it all offseason. The offseason really just getting started for him, so it's even more time for him to work on this game. Um, he already has a game plan and idea for what he wants to do, so I'm a fan of it, man. I, I love that Odafi Owe was able to sit back, look at his game, and say, hey, look, I need to be I need to be better in here, here, and here. Let's go get it. I love that. And um, obviously, we talked about him a lot, but, you know, working with Dr. Rush, uh, you know, Chuck Smith is very, very key, right? Um, he's a guy that is known for developing outside linebacks, known for developing pass rushers. And um, him being with Odafi Owe, is going, to me, is only going to increase the likelihood that um, Odafi Owe is a successful pass rusher next year. Because to be quite honest with you, as it stands right now, we're, we're way far away from the season. Obviously, things could change. The Ravens need Odafi Owe to break out, right? Just how like, they kind of needed Patrick Queen to break out or their linebacker core wouldn't be as good. 
and he did that, right? So the Ravens are kind of depending on the same thing for Odafi away, right? They need uh, Ojabo to play up to his potential, right? I mean, to me, it's really his rookie year, honestly. I mean, he played, what, one or two games last year, you know, whatever. Excuse me. But Odafi is a guy where it's like, it's time. So uh, I'm interested to see what he got. And, um, yeah, I think he could be an effective pass rusher for the Ravens. I really do. Uh, but that's the Ravens news from the weekend, man. You know, Lamar will be here at the OTAs. A time Monk is helping the Ravens play at a faster pace. And Odafi always is looking to break out in year three, man. So, um, yeah, man, if you took to this point in the video, consider hitting that subscribe button, man. Thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, Y'all have a great day. I'll leave your thoughts and comments down below. I reply to pretty much all comments, man. But anyway, I'm going to get out of here. It's Gabriel. There's another fan TV. I'm out.